Hi, I'm Susan Tepperman. I am 52 years old and I live currently in Munster, Indiana. Um, I am today being filmed for a new cooking show by my friend's son, Michael Goldenberg, who is a theater and communications major at Indiana University. So thanks, Michael, for doing this. Um, and today what I'm going to be making is uh, my signature challah recipe. I like to find out what everybody's special recipe is. Um, I, I ask people when I'm out, if I'm at someone's home, what their family recipe is, what's their special thing that they cook, because I think that's the way to find the tastiest and the most satisfying recipes, truly. Later I will be making Moroccan tilapia that I learned from uh, an Israeli uh, young lady. She's the friend of who I like to call my Israeli son, Avi, and her name is Dekla. She was living in the United States at the time, and it's, um, it's Moroccan because her grandparents are Moroccan, and they taught her how to make this. So let's start with the challah. First of all, I've got in the bowl, I have two sticks of margarine. I'm using margarine because I keep kosher, and I'm trying to have, a, uh, in the end, a product that has neither dairy products nor meat products. So I can serve the challah with either uh, meal, whether I'm having a dairy meal or a meat meal. Um, when you keep kosher, you separate your milk and your meat. And there are other rules too, which I'll get into another time. But I'm going to start with two tablespoons of yeast. Um, I like to do rounded teaspoons. I don't, I don't measure exactly. I said this once before, I believe in abundance. So uh, while a tablespoon is great, a heaping tablespoon is better, okay? So let's start with that. I also need, um, I need to have some very, very hot water, about a half a cup. Oops, almost made a big mistake there. Oh. Okay, there we go, that should be ready. So now I'm gonna mix that up, you see that? I'll start with, now, if I had used boiling water in here, it would have been a problem. It would have, what we would call killed the yeast, it would have been too hot, and it wouldn't have risen properly. In the meantime, I'm going to cut up the margarine so that it will melt better, and I'm going to add to it, I'm going to add to my margarine a tablespoon of salt and three quarters uh, uh, cups of sugar. So there's my tablespoon of salt. Salt's the one thing I don't round up. <laughs> uh, I try to avoid too much salt. Okay, so now I have my eggs. I'm going to add three eggs. Okay. And now I'm going to add eight cups of flour. The usual recipe that I make has, or the regular recipe, has an entire five pound bag of flour and it makes eight loaves. Uh, I find that if I make eight loaves, I either use eight loaves or give away eight loaves. If I make four, I give away four. So I try to make at least four every week uh, on Friday. So today, although it's not Friday, I'm going to make a four loaf batch. All right, now I'm going to go over to my yeast, which you can see. I'm going to show you, Michael. All right, you see that? The, it's nice and bubbly. And... You all, Michael, you used to come over and eat challah all the time at my house before you went away to school. Do you I remember? did. <laughs> I made challah once too. You did? What? Uh, eighth grade. Probably wasn't as good as this. You, you made challah at my house with I me, did, didn't you? I did. With your Sunday school class. Yes, you did. I have pictures of that, Michael. I do. I do. It was fun. It was fun. Okay, so you actually knew how to do this already. This isn't your uh. first time. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to push this back and give myself a little more room to knead. Um, all right, so this is what happens. So now I am, I have all the ingredients, my yeast and my flour are added. You getting a good film? You getting that, Michael? I think so. <laughs> this is like, this is quite a workout. <laughs> okay, so now I'm taking my little tea towel and you can see the dough has risen. I'm going to cut it into four pieces. And each of these four is going to become a loaf. Okay, so let's start with this. Now I do a four loaf. I think it's much prettier. So what I'm going to do is start, I divide it into four equal pieces. And after doing this for probably, probably uh, once a week for maybe 15 years, you kind of get good at figuring out 
how to make the pieces even. So now that I have evened out my lumps of dough, I'm going to roll them into snakes. Okay, so I will. I'll probably show you a couple of them, but you have to watch closely, Michael, because you know how you know how complicated this is. I right? do. <laughs> yeah, some of the students' loaves didn't look quite. There's like pretty steep learning curve when it comes to evening out and get, making the snakes. <laughs> a steep learning yeah. curve. That's great. I have a son, Matt, who is a who, who was a theater major at Indiana University. Uh, and he is currently working at the New York Stage and Film in uh, Poughkeepsie, New York, which is on the campus of Vassar. And I have also two other kids. I have Jacob, who is, he is my middle child. He's 21. He's a business major at Indiana University. I have a daughter, Melissa, who was just off camera but ran out before you could meet her. Uh, who is, she's 16 and she's going to be a junior at Munster High School and she teaches tennis. Here we are with uh, my vegetables. I'm going to peel the carrots and get them ready to put in my tilapia recipe. So the first thing I'm going to do is cut off the stems. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the carrots and I'm going to put them in the pot. Just lay them on the bottom of the pot, very simply, like that. So the idea behind this is the peppers cook and they get such a beautiful flavor. Really, really scrumptious to take my tomato paste. And I'm going to mix it with uh, sweet paprika oil. This I made, uh, the way that I did this was I about, about an hour ago. I put a tablespoon of paprika to a half a cup of oil. It hasn't settled quite as much as I would like, but it's okay. And you see, now you can see the oil is gone, but the paprika remains. You can kind of see that. So you have the flavor, it's sort of oil infused with paprika. Now, I'm going to, this is cilantro. Love that smell of cilantro. So I'm going to give this also kind of a rough chop a tablespoon of turmeric, a tablespoon of cumin, okay, and I'm going to chop up a bunch of garlic. I like the garlic to be chopped a little more fine, that's just my personal preference. I like to uh, have the garlic infused into the flavor rather than to taste chunks of garlic. So here's what we've got. You see this nice, yeah, I do. nice paste? It's Oh, it smells so good. I'm going to add water just to the edge of the fish. It's going to cover, not quite cover the fish, it's just going to go to the edge. I'm going to turn it on. I'm going to leave it uncovered because that the water will cook out and this will make a delicious sauce. So here we have the finished product. And if you can imagine a nice big hunk of challah dipped in this sauce, it is sumptuous. Mikey, come on. Hey, Jake. How's your day? It was great. You know what? I'm fi we're filming now. I'm just going to pull the halas out of the oven. Okay. Ready? Okay. Fish looks good, too. Ah, I'm glad it's you like good. it. Actually, it's for dinner tonight. I will um, let you taste it. You'll be my first tester. Okay. <laughs> there we go. I chose challah for my recipe because, to me, it represents a very important aspect of Jewish tradition, the sense of continuity, uh, a really important sense of identity about who we are. Uh, one of the most important things that I think I've imparted to my kids is how meals contribute to who we are. Uh, every single night I try to have us sit down for a meal together. One of the ways that I really work on our enjoyment of our meals together is by making everything beautiful. As these candlesticks, in fact, came with my great-grandparents when they left Russia. Not only are they wonderful candlesticks for the Sabbath, but they are what ties me to my family. One of the most special things that we did during Shabbat, our Friday night meal together, was just before we began to eat, after we said the blessings, my husband or I would whisper something really special into the ear of each child. It was a great way to end the week with something really nice and gentle and relaxing and it was a great way to start our meal together. My philosophy on life is every day is a holiday and every meal is a feast.